Well, if you just joined us, you're welcome. You're watching Politics HQ here on New Central Television. We're looking at the journey of Nigeria and Nigerians to the elections, uh, which is just uh, some few weeks away. Talking about the presidential and the National Assembly election, which comes first. And of course, Dr. Chima Naji, a lawyer, joins me now. Uh, Dr. Naji, good to see you and thanks for your time. The politicians are already speaking and uh, Nigerians are uh, gauging, seething and of course uh, agitating among themselves and, and around the politicians to see where the ballot may be put on the day of election. Uh, this is not the first national election you have experienced. Let us in on what you think is happening. Are there things that will make this a marked different uh, election from what we've seen in times past? Good evening, Solomon, and nice to see you. Uh, good evening, Avias. <laughs> good uh, to see you. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, I, I, I didn't uh, catch the last uh, part okay. of your question. Well, let, let, let me take that again. Uh, let, let me, I'm please, asking, uh, uh, Dr. Nigel, what I'm asking, I'm asking, uh, let's first of all start by giving an overview of how uh, this election is going for Nigerians. Do you think this is uh, an unprecedented election that Nigeria is about to see? Are there different things you've seen in time past that are quite, uh, you know, different from what we're seeing at the moment? Definitely the 2023 election especially the presidential election, will not be business as usual. Many uh, indicators are to that effect. And um, the old politicians that, uh, used, that are used to the old tricks of uh, vote buying, rigging, and all of you, uh, they are doing all they can to truncate the election in various uh, uh, technical ways. But uh, the determination of uh, the average Nigerian, having suffered a lot in the hands of the, uh, the old uh, political structure and setup, uh, they want uh, a new era in which their votes must count. And it appears that the new Electoral Act uh, 2022 and the new political culture that is emerging and uh, the new configuration that just uh, threw itself in the political firmament. All of them appear to be uh, making it uh, possible for the expectations that next year's election will be a watershed election in the, the annals of our Nigerian history, political history. Uh, and one other aspect has to do with the CBN. Love the governor or hate the governor. There is something about the cashless policy which politicians and pushing back. I want you to speak on this because uh, 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 Dr. Naji, some are saying that they should be given some kind of waiver as that may impede on logistics. Uh, speak to us on this. What do they mean by logistics? Can't that also be done in a cashless-based society? You see, Suleiman, I just said that it appears so many things are uh, working in tandem uh, to conduce to the expectations that next year's election will not be business as usual, at least to exercise Nigeria and Nigerian citizens of all the albatross of the past and the political liabilities of those jobbers. The cashless uh, policy, even the timing now, uh, to me, is very good. And uh, in one of my um, posts on my wall, uh, the Facebook wall, I suggested to the uh, uh, CBM that even if it has to review this policy, it should be around Easter next year. So, so, so you mean after, it must be after the elections? Have, yes, after the election, because that will be the opportunity Nigerians have to curtail the effect of cash. Because we are already hearing that so many people are buying the voters' cards and all that, in spite of the fact that it is being stated that uh, the, 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 uh, the voting will be based on accredited people, not on the, uh, the register.
So if you if you are buying the voters cards of people who may not even present themselves for the election or for voting, you are you are holding a, 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 a rubbish in your hands. But nevertheless, the use of money can still do more damage in many other areas that are novel because politicians are people who work day and night to create new problems where solutions are being advanced to solve them. Not in the sense of going to the moon or improving the health uh, technology of uh, uh, the, the, the citizens, but how to grab power by truncating the known processes. So I, my, my, my personal suggestion is that this cashless policy, even if it has to be reviewed based on any clamor for whatever, it should be after Easter, so that the, the, we would have seen the evolution of that policy, because that's the destination to go. And if it is uh, going to help to curb the issue of uh, vote buying and uh, too much um, uh, manipulations or paying of talks, because the talks need to, to you know, will be paid to collect their money before they un unleash mayhem on the system. So everybody should be almost on the same pedestal. If you have uh, logistical issues, if you have people, they will solve it. If you don't have people, you don't need to buy people. Uh, in order to influence the election against the Electoral Act. So I believe that the cashless policy is something that is uh, welcome and uh, the timing is very right. Despite all the uh, clamor and the shenanigans of uh, the politicians. You, you, know, you know, listening to you, uh, uh, Dr. Naji, you, you, you seem to have opened a, a different perspective talking about cashless policy because if you look at some of the arguments of politicians saying that this uh, may affect their logistics, one wonders if uh, logistics, uh, you know, funding can't also be sent, you know, electronically. But again, coming back to the headlines we're seeing now about some sort of move against the CBN governor, that may also point to the fact that you just may be spot on. I want us to stretch this for a bit and talk about uh, what this may mean for our, our democracy. Now, it, you think this, even if there's going to be a review, as you highlighted, should be done after the elections. Uh, how will this further help uh, do Nigerians uh, good by watering down our money politics, especially in an election year? Well, if I heard you very well, because I'm, uh, I think there's a little bit network issue on my area. But if I heard you very well, you are probably asking me how this policy will affect the money politics in our uh, in, in our system. Yes. I believe that's the question, is it? Yes. Very well. It is very obvious. It's very, very obvious, Lemon. You know, we, we are no strangers in this country. Where somebody will carry bullion van, you, know, you see, any time children see rice, they will be excited. That is also what money does to Togri and uh, those who want to truncate the system. Money provides the kind of uh, motivation for people to do the wrong things if they are paid at the behest of the man who dictates the tune. So the tendency is that if, I mean, this issue of logistics, can somebody really define what logistics is about? Because logistics might be so much a nebulous term that uh, corrupt uses of uh, power and money uh, could be part of the so-called logistics. We know the legitimate uh, logistics on election period. If you want to pay for transport, the, the policy has not said that you should not transfer money electronically. That has not been uh, the, 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 the thrust of the policy. The policy has not said you should not use lower denominations because using lower denominations means that you are not going for quantum leap on the use of money to spoil the system. It means that you are paying for petty things and so on. If you are paying for transport, you can pay by, by, by uh, electronic means. Those transporters, some of them even pay for fuel with their uh, ATM cards. So I believe that uh, it's going to instill a lot of uh, discipline. 
even the mere fact that CBN will insist on that policy before and after the election, you will see the kind of uh, impact it's going to have on bad behaviors of politicians. You know, speaking of impact, uh, uh, Dr. Naji, the, the, the other thing here is the pushback that uh, uh, we, we're seeing in the headlines. How, how can the country ensure that such pushback don't break this policy to the extent that uh, the process of getting things right uh, for Nigeria's democracy isn't truncated? I'm sorry, please, can you come with that uh, last question? Uh, um, I want us to look at the headlines. Uh, there so, seems to be some kind of pushback against this policy by some vested interest against the central bank. Uh, how can Nigeria and Nigerians ensure that this pushback doesn't actually break the process of ensuring that Nigeria's democracy is on course? I can tell you there is a massive determination of the Nigerian people to ensure that next year's, next year's election comes to fruition and the, in line with the direction of their expectation, which many of them are working very tirelessly to bring about. So if it is the wish of God that many things are happening to conduce to bring in this expectations to fruition. So be it. Nigerians are weary of poverty in the midst of plenty. Nigerians are weary of promises. Give you 5,000 Naira and you mortgage your conscience and you sell your vote. And of course, you are right to meaningful existence. Because by the time you sell 5,000 Naira and you have Four, four years of uh, sentencing to abject poverty. You will be at the receiving end. The man would have left your location and catapulted himself to affluence. So the best thing is that we should nip it in the board. And I believe that um, for too long a thing has existed in a negative way. For so long, God may bring a change. And I believe that this is the time. And uh, the pushback that you are seeing is clearly and clearly identifying those people who have held us hostage. And you can see they've tried to rub it in the, in the gap of poor people. And how can people in the rural areas, who made them spokespersons of rural people? Rural people never used telephones. When the telephones came, everybody adapted and adjusted to it. Even uh, the phone, they can speak uh, any language into it, and the communication will still take place. And the critical issue about phone is the communication. So even if the village woman in the remotest part of Nigeria is not using text message, they use voice. And data has become very important. If a lad strikes on the phone, they will see whether it is 10 Naira or 20 Naira. The figure is very well known to everybody. So they should not bother about uh, the villagers, about cashless. Uh, they don't have cash in any case. So the, the lower rung of the operation is in their favor. And this one, they are, they are, they are, they are uh, uh, bemoaning, uh, I don't think um, they are right. It is not in the interest of the poor man that they are speaking. They are speaking for themselves, but they need to come clean so that they could be placed in accordance with the law. So in other words, you say this amounts to the, those who are pushing back Perhaps uh, uh, the, the masquerade has been stripped of, uh, you know, the, the, the gap. So now Nigerians should look clef carefully to seeing those uh, who are pushing back as those holding the country uh, to ransom. Exactly. Since uh, you have come to issue of masquerade now, <laughs> the, if the, the players for the masquerade are playing well and the masquerade dances badly it will, it will be unmasked and um I, I i i as a village man i don't have to tell you what you will see when the masquerade is unmasked but i believe that um what is going on now is good for the polity 
And uh, the masquerade appears to be dancing alone at the village square. And nobody is watching because the ones that uh, they watched, they only had so much of dust to go home with. So I think the issue about uh, the cashless policy, CBN should be steadfast. Even if there is any other drawback, we review that after Easter. Let's not uh, be frenetic. The policy has not it has hardly been tested. So who can be talking about whether it is going? All those things are in the, in the realm of speculation. Let's test the system first. The policy should be tested. And it is possible that uh, three, four months will be reasonably a uh, good time to take a review, either for uh, adjustment or maybe uh, consolidation, as the case may be. But certainly not before or during the election. The election should be done within the milieu of this policy because I think it is healthy for this country. Well, let's uh, take you back in time. Uh, you had spoken then, uh, you, you had conversation with us on Villa Square Africa where you uh, posited that it's good for us to have a debating system, a debate culture. The people uh, must speak to the electorates. The people must speak to the people. And back in time, as Africans, we had people who uh, would come to the Villa Square and speak, address issues, uh, perhaps maybe in the King's Court, uh, are we seeing that in our democracy? Because uh, over and over again, we have seen candidates who uh, seem to be uh, against having such kind of conversation with the people. Uh, Naji. You see, I, I watched uh, the last uh, guest, uh, a spokesperson of one of the candidates uh, in the election. Uh, particularly, in, I think, uh, I think who Abubakar. Um, the PDP we are talking about today is not even the PDP of uh, yesteryears. The, the, a lot of uh, things have happened to this PDP. And the APC we are talking about today is also not even the APC of uh, 2015. A lot has happened. Now, people were almost to be railroaded into any of these political parties before it pleased God that a third force, as, as they called it, emerged to conduce to Peter Obi, coming with a different perspective altogether. So the campaign these days no longer involves people going to decide corner to chop corn to demonstrate that they can also be ordinary or dance in the open market as if they are Baba just or do some of those funny things that uh, do not enhance our understanding of the uh, electoral value of the Nigerian citizens. Everybody now is talking about town hall, even though some of them, the, their concept of town hall is to come there and uh, talk glibly. The right of the Nigerian voter appears to be on the front burner. And because of the Electoral Act 2022, and all the enabling laws. And of course, it appears that uh, the INEC of today, under uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Mahmoud, appears to have uh, keyed into the general clamor that 2023 must deliver on credibility, must deliver on competence, must deliver on integrity of the process, that Nigerians are no longer going to sit by and watch people fritter away their lives anymore. Because the young ones of today, by the next four years, they will no longer be claiming to be young. They would have been adults. They, are, they will be confronted with either they are looking for a wife or they are getting their children and responsibilities and so on. So it will be a monumental waste to go the way of their parents that they see the way they look now. In fact, so many parents now, when they go to the mirror, they cry because that was not what they were made to look like. The way they are looking was not the intention of God. It's somebody that has denatured them through misgovernance and bad administration, corruption, and all the nepotistic practices. Things that ordinarily should not weigh us down. People are bringing them in because they don't know anything better. 
So I believe that Nigerians are not going to sit down and watch their votes wasted. There are some people who are still on the fringes, but those people between now and the next year should be able to advise themselves. What is it that the old people have not tried? You, don't, you, you cannot learn a new trick at old age. Mm. That's why even a rat making a, running a maze, when you release it from a cage, it runs through the same maze that it is used to. It cannot create a new path. That's why it is always possible to catch it back. So I believe it is important to try new, uh, new uh, experience. And let me tell you my own personal uh, um, opinion. I believe that the APC should just give way because it is an insult for APC to come back to ask for another four years. Even if uh, Tinubu were to be young, because his age and the argument about his health seem to be impediment. This is no longer the same Tinubu that uh, everybody used to know. Everybody one day will age. Everybody one day will have ailment. There's nothing uh, uh, wrong about that. But like I had cause to advise sometime about 2011 or thereabout, I advised him on TVC for that matter, that as a kingmaker, he should not insist on being part of the contest of the kingship or the stool, because the dust of contest can blind somebody's eye, having not been in the arena in that sense. So respect is more for a kingmaker. Now, that is, by the way, it is his right, but I believe that APC should not, in fact, insult us anymore by insisting that it wants to come back to rule us. In the same way, we have not even finished with them. They are, if, if within these few months, more damage can be done to our, uh, our, our future, generally. But I believe that Buhari should learn more less. The end of a thing is always supposed to be better than its beginning. Buhari can finish better than he started. And uh, the uh, history can accord him that uh, recognition. He went to the U.S. They told him he did well. That he's doing well democratically. Uh, the, maybe some people are pointing or Shun State, pointing uh, Anambra State, pointing the signing of the Electoral Act and so on and so forth. He should take more spirited steps to ensure that the right thing is done, both in terms of security, particularly all right. A lot of uh, political parties, are, or in some political parties, are endangered species. They are killing a lot of people in Labour Party. Mm. Okay, if they say that the Labour Party is a threat, it's a contest. It's not a. It's, it's not a war. All right. So that, 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 then talking about articles, uh, candidates, yeah. I believe that candidates is an insult to the average Igbo man, because for him to be saying uh, after me then it will be the turn of Igbos. When indeed is the one that has truncated the, the, the interest of Igbos, political, in that sense. So what is he unifying? However, I leave him with uh, the five uh, musketeers who have constituted albatross to his uh, political ambition. If uh, the, the candidate, uh, if uh, the voters think that uh, he's the man, let us see how it goes. Because we cannot have him from the same ethnic uh, background with the current president back-to-back. Back. So, well, I, I think, I think the questions yeah, yeah. are slaves. Correct? Uh, well, well, Chairman Ajay, I think uh, that said, uh, I hope that uh, in the new year, just uh, before the election, we should be having you back again to speak more on uh, these uh, candidates, uh, specifically to also uh, tell us on what you've been able to get uh, uh, by gauging the policies uh, first with the cbn policy and secondly looking at the bivas that'll be next when we meet here many thanks for your time as always thank you very much thank you very much